think it's working. All right. Yeah, it looks like it's working now. All right. Today, we're going to do a couple of things. Um, mostly digital things, so tools that you can use, um, particularly tools for creating geometry to print. Um, obviously, you've got things like SolidWorks, Fusion 360, those sort of tools. I'm not really going to talk about those today, although um, shortly, uh, well, somewhere in down here, July 14th time frame, so mid-July somewhere, um, we will look at SolidWorks and Fusion 360. I also have this one called um, In Topology. That's a newer program. These are all for creating geometry um, that is optimized. So maybe you have some base level geometry, parametric type models, and you want to optimize them um, for strength or weight or weight reduction, um, rigidity, sort of thing, those sort of things. Uh, but you want to tell the program that, hey, these aren't limited by traditional CNC subtractive type processes. Uh, they could be additive, and that opens up a whole new set of geometry that you can use. In fact, the, um, the software itself will create that geometry, or at least help you create that geometry. So we will talk about SolidWorks and Fusion later. Um, today, these are more simple tools. So these are, um, um, one in particular that we'll probably spend the most time on is called Mesh Mixer. So that is meshmixer.com. 3.5 is now available. Now that was written back in um, 2018. So it's, it's, it hasn't been updated in several years. Um, I don't know that they even plan on updating it um, any longer, but uh, maybe they will do. They just haven't lately. In fact, it says the bug fix uh, from 2018 was they removed the update notification. So that kind of makes me think they're not, they don't plan on updating it um, anymore. But um, it does work. It's free. Um, it's a uh, I don't know if it actually counts as open source anymore. Um, maybe it does. It doesn't say on here, but um, it is free. There's not a paid version or anything like that. It is just what it is. Um, one thing about it is that uh, it is resource intensive. It can be anyway, um, and it can crash if you're doing um, complicated operations on high density models, so really large models. Uh, large as far as file size models um, and so it can have issues with crashing so you if you are working on something uh, and you plan it's not a simple operation you want to do a lot of things one after the other then it's very good idea to save your work often um, because it does uh, tend to hang up occasionally it might in fact it might hang up while we're doing this since I've got so many other things open at the same time but um, it is a good piece of software and I don't know a similar piece of software that is free that um, will will do quite as many things as this will do. So I do use it quite a bit. You download um, whichever version of this you want, um, Windows or Macintosh. Looks like they have the 3.3 version and the 3.5 version available. So meshmixer.com is where you get this one. The other one that I use often that's not SolidWorks or Fusion is Tinkercad. Both of these are actually, well, they're currently Autodesk products. They weren't necessarily created by Autodesk, but um, Autodesk owns their rights right now, I suppose. Um, so Tinkercad, I've showed it before. I like it for creating really simple things or even editing models a little bit, maybe chopping them up a little or embossing something on them. Um, you know, something where it's an operation that I don't want to fire up SolidWorks to try and do this, or maybe it's even kind of more complicated to do in SolidWorks than it is in Tinkercad for some of these things. Um, basically, the way that Tinkercad works is you have a, a lot of primitive shapes, you know, over here on the right hand side um, that are all editable, and then you have a whole bunch of like shape generators and other things that are kind of built in also. Most of the time, I stay in the basic shapes category, and um, it's a I don't know exactly how what the word is for it, but it's a modeler where uh, you have it's a solids modeler, so you have all these solids, and uh, you can join them together. You can um, use these negative blocks to cut away pieces. So if we selected all those and grouped them, then it would 
you know, cut away the negative and weld the uh, positives together. Um, it does have dimension, so you can go and, you know, sort of accurately dimension things. It is not ideal for that sort of work, although it can be done. Um, it does get a little bit, a little bit cumbersome compared to a workflow in SolidWorks or Fusion that is more designed to be a uh, parametric modeler versus what Tinkercad is designed to be. But it is a really handy program if you just need a quick shape. Um, you can kind of, let's see if I go back to the main page here, you can kind of see some of the shapes that I have put around. Here's the, I made this, you know, it's three pieces. There's a, a stick and two cylinders. One's a hollow or one's a subtraction and one's a uh, solid piece. And that's the uh, Z rod um, handle that I built. Um, here's where I took a, a Tinkercad model for a fan cover and embossed my name on it. Um, some of these are just stuff. That, here's one that's actually pretty complicated. Um, well, not still not complicated. Let's look at it. Um, but this one is uh, some lightsaber-ish type model. And so you can kind of see, you can see all the basic shapes in there. Um, cylinders, lots of squish cylinders, lots of cylinders, I guess. Some, some uh, tours to cut this little groove out over here. Um, and, and you can kind of imagine how it's built up together, some cones in there, um, some angled slices, uh, all sorts of things. And you can get some interesting geometry. In fact, I use this for um, a, uh, a render example I did in another class. Um, so you can do, you know, here's a little toolbox toaster type thing. Here's some little, uh, oh, these are uh, ground effect vehicles for a game called Ogre. Uh, but you can kind of see how there's a lot of different pieces put together. Obviously this, I don't even know what this was, but I needed a spacer with two holes in it. Um, here's a little mounting bracket. Here's another power supply mounting bracket. So you can make actual models with this um, that are usable. Here's a card stand for like a card, uh, a trading card in a top loader. A lot of different things. Here's just scribbles. Um, so you can kind of see that you can make interesting geometry some people spend a lot of time building out geometry in um in something like tinkercad here's a here's a little token uh we'll, we'll actually build one of these because these are uh handy to show off a, a two color print with a one nozzle printer um there's a little steak uh all kinds of stuff so it's it is a quick it runs in your browser you don't download anything um, that's tinkercad.com. You do have to have an account as far as it's a free account, but you have to log into it um, because you know it stores all your all your files that you create. Um, and so it um, it does have the ability. It doesn't always work for me, but it does have the ability since it's an Autodesk product that you can start something in Tinkercad and then uh, let's let's just open one and I'm not going to actually do it, but I'll show you. Um, you can send to up here and you can send to Autodesk Fusion 360. So if you also use 360, then uh, you can send models directly into it that you started in Tinkercad and then you maybe want to finish up in uh, Fusion 360. You can also send it to Thinker Thingiverse and I don't know all these other places actually. Um, merge EDU, that's the merge cube thing. But um, so it's it's a nice program for you just want to create something pretty simple. You don't want to get SolidWorks out or some things actually are simpler to do in Tinkercad than they are in SolidWorks, unless you are very proficient with SolidWorks. Um, so I don't really want to spend a whole bunch of time uh, going through how to use Tinkercad. I do have some older videos that are short-ish, like 20 minutes or so, talking about doing some uh, modeling in Tinkercad, so you can look those up if you want to. And there are a lot of others from all sorts of people that walk through how to build things in Tinkercad. I think maybe I've, I've built this um, toaster toolbox uh, in Tinkercad one time a on, on YouTube. Um, all right, so Mesh Mixer. What it does is, uh, well, you can think of the name here. Mesh means the, the actual geometry that you want to uh, print is uh, a triangulated mesh. That's what the STL file is. It's just a triangulated mesh. So it doesn't have the, the history 
type of information that a SOLIDWORKS part file would have where um, you know it has all of the structure of how you built it the mesh is just the outer shape you know it's just the the surface that defines the volume um, and it is just a series of vertices that are connected in the triangles and mapped to that surface and then mixing is the other part of mesh mixer and so what it the idea is not to create geometry from scratch kind of like tinkercad or fusion 360 or solidworks but to take existing geometry maybe create a little bit it does have some tools for creating geometry it is even has some sculpting tools in there they're they're kind of um i don't know they're not that great but they do work um i'll show you a, you a better program for sculpting if you want to do that um, but taking models that already exist stl files that already exist object files obj files um, that someone else has made and then mixing them together you can kind of see in the picture here they've got uh, this rabbit this is one of the standard models in mesh mixer and they've done a whole bunch of operations to it cut it up in different ways um, turn it into a multicolor model all sorts of different things um, so let's go to mesh mixer I've got our benchy in there well, actually all I did is when you first open it it opens up a um, little pop-up that says uh, import or open you know or, or just start from scratch kind of thing so I, I click the import so here's import up here and so I imported um, we'll just go through that process the 3d benchy STL file um, you can import OBJ's POIs STLs AMF 3MF off mix so mix is the mesh mixer um, format uh, so you can import those so those are typically files that do not have any sort of history associated with them um, and they are just the mesh themselves some of these uh, the mesh mixer might have some history from mesh mixer in it um, so those are your typical files so STL you can go to Thingiverse and get a whole bunch of STL files and then uh, you open the STL file and you this one does come in right on the plane a lot of times though you do have to go in and edit a line so that you can align it to the plane because it's floating off in the air or whatever um, so a lot of times you do have to do that first this one came in already on the bottom so you didn't have to do anything with that then what can you do so what you might want to do or maybe you want to mix multiple models together so you need another model to do that. You can't just, uh, you, could, you could have two benchies, I suppose. We could, we could import another benchy and append it. So let's, uh, let's get another benchy in here. What is this one? Oh, that's that thing that uh, I just showed you. Let's do another benchy. Now it's basically on top of each other. So let's edit transform so that we can move it. And it's got a little gizmo in here where you can move things around. The arrows translate, the um, arcs rotate, the squares scale in that direction. I don't really want to do that. Let's rotate it where they're back to back. I think that's the green one. Um, there are, you know, guide snapping too if you want that. So here we could make a, uh, you know, a double sided bench if we wanted to. Um, maybe we could get them lined up better sort of like that um, and if we go over here this little object browser it's not open all the time by default sometimes it pops up whenever you import a second model or when you do certain operations but sometimes it's not there um, and if you want it there you want if you want to select objects you can select objects by clicking on them or uh, brush your painting over them the selection you want um, but sometimes you want to select the entire object so view um, show objects browser or apparently control shift zero or O. I guess that's O. Um, that brings this window up and you can select things in here so you can select different things um, and you can hide different things so very simple this is like the very basic mesh mixing I've got two meshes I want to put them together so I go to my object browser I don't know why it it's, <laughs> it moves around very strangely um, I can't get it up here in the top where I want it. Um, so I hold down control and select in my object browser all of the meshes I want to put together. And as soon as I select at least two, then 
I've got this pop-up window over here where I can just copy them. Um, I can transform them as a group. I can align them to something, uh, combine them, or Boolean union. So Boolean operations, you, you probably know what Boolean operations are. They're, you know, intersections and unions and differences and things like that. Um, union merges them together. So anywhere they overlap will become one object and there'll be one double-sided benchy. So if I do that, it will give me some options. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna um, test out some things first. Um, it might be slow, so I will say that. Um, it, these models, I don't remember how many megabytes, but they're kind of larger models, the benchies are, um, like 30 megabytes maybe. And um, it does take a little bit of op time to operate and I don't have a way to fast forward. But now um, I've got a couple of things. First of all, let's get this out of the way. I've got these uh, red and blue um, leader lines. These are showing areas where it didn't know what to do. In fact, you can kind of see, did some weird stuff right here. But um, if I go over here in my union uh, menu over here, I can get some better uh, joins here. So usually I do search depth at zero. So you can move the sliders. Um, they're laggy. So moving the sliders is very laggy because it has to go through the whole process again. In fact, these might not have been the best models to uh, use for this um, because it is every time I change a thing, it's going to update. Um, but I usually put search depth, search depth at zero. I usually do not auto reduce the result. Um, solution mode, I usually use precise um, so that it is trying to recreate the geom geometry as best as possible. Um, maybe I'll do pa fast approximate until I get the um, other settings set so that it uh, is a little bit faster. Um, preview iterations. I will eventually put that around 15 to 20, somewhere in there, maybe 18. Uh, target edge scale. This usually I want to be a small number so that it is trying to recreate sharp edges. Um, a lot of times I'll go to 0.2. Um, merge border rings. I usually drop that down to around 1. It's already at 2. Um, looks like it's going to take a while to refine anyway. Hopefully this will fill in our little gaps here where it's showing some some weirdness. And we might have to just go get simpler models that are going to be easier for it to deal with. Maybe just a cube. Because I'd rather show the process than sit here and watch the uh, little progress bar not move. <clears throat> In fact... Let's do that. Let's get some simpler models because these are taken and it might have actually uh, kind of locked up on me. I may have to close it. Let's see. Oh, there. Oh, it actually, well, all right. So it actually went and filled in the gaps there that it had before. Um, I would go drop this down to one and again, like do the preview iterations up. But since it's taken so long, I'm not going to do that. Um, all of these little blue and red lines are pointing out errors that we can look at. Um, oh, all right, so there you go. So a lot of times with, with complex model geometries, um, you get things like this. That's the downside to Mesh Mixer and the downside that it hasn't been updated in you know three years. So, or really updated in like four or five years. Um, it did create the geometry though, so I don't know if it merged it though. No, it didn't actually merge it. It just kind of aborted the operation. Let's get some simpler models in here. Oh, I just uh, selected and hit delete. All right, let's import something. Let's let's do this little guy that it should not be very complicated. Uh, let's see what size the benchy is. Well, it's only 10 megabytes, but still, it was creating issues with this. Um, this one should not. All right, so we got this little uh, knob for the top of the um, Z screw on the uh, Ender 3, um, or any 8 millimeter Z screw, I suppose. Let's, let's bring in another one. Append it. So you can replace, if you just want to start with a new model, you can replace the existing one. 
Um, we're going to append, so we want two of these things in here. And they landed right on top of each other, which is kind of handy because now we can edit, transform. Um, we can, you can, so I used the little gizmo last time. You can actually type in um, over here. Now, I don't remember which axis is which, though. So, um, and I don't know that it's given me a preview of any axis. So let's see if I rotate about X 180. Okay, X is uh, red. So... Oh, did negative 180. I didn't type. Hmm. I don't think I typed the negative though. There's the one I want though. Um, we could get these guys to overlap. And now we have a double handed one. So hopefully this will merge much better. Let's select both of them. So I control clicked over in the object browser, um, Boolean union. Uh, we will do precise, we'll do search depth at zero, we will not auto reduce, we will reduce our edge scale. <laughs> so, so my edge scale is at one and the preview here is obviously not what I want. So let's drop that down to 0.2, better. Um, let's do this at one, a little bit better. Um, let's do our preview iterations at a bigger number. So we're still getting, you know, some not great over here. Um, let's let's do our target edge scale to one five and see if that little better. Obviously, it's taking longer and longer each time uh, to do these as I reduce the target edge scale. I reduced it quite a bit on that last one. Let's see what if we get a better looking result. Yeah, that looks, you know, still got some jaggies, still got some jaggies, but much better. So we will accept that. And now I've got, you know, one of these that has two handles on it. Another way to do the same thing. And there's only one, notice in our object browser, there's only one um, file over here now. All right. Um, you can do, it has a mesh mix button over here that has, you know, a couple, there's that rabbit, a couple of primitives. One of them is a cube. And we could go in and, um, I don't know what size this thing, I don't remember, maybe five. That looks about the right, yeah, that's the right thickness. And then, uh, let's see. Let's undo uniform scaling so that I can scale it in each direction individually. Let's do, stretch it out this way. Um, I don't remember how long I made those. Let's make them an even 100. And then kind of, you know, if we can make one with four handles on it, we could probably do a better job of aligning. And there is an align tool. I just usually do it by eye. In fact, we might, could go in and edit a line, at least align it to the plane here so that uh, we don't have to worry about that part being out of a line. There you go. And then kind of something like that. And now you can go in and uh, I've got two things over here and I could union them together. Um, and so you can, you can mish mesh mix models, that's hard for me to say, um, like that, where you take individual pieces um, and put them together. So these could be models from Thingiverse. Um, you can do a little bit of editing on these also. Um, some of the editing tools are maybe not as robust as, as other programs, but there is a little bit of editing you can do. Um, I'm not going to worry with going through all of the uh, options over here. I'm going to take the defaults, which are going to kind of round it out a little bit, but that's okay for what we're doing. Um, I'd rather it be faster than accurate right now. Okay. Um, oh, well, maybe I should have carried a little bit more because it decimated it to the point of not existing. Control Z. Um, 
does work at I don't know how many levels of undo there are but uh, there's at least one level <clears throat> all right um, I don't know that why I actually even undid that let's go to Thingiverse and let's let's build us a model um, kind of how mesh mixer is intended to be used there's two in my opinion there's two reasons you use mesh mixer so one of them could be that you can add supports it does have a support generator in here you can analyze models um, for um, holes and things like that and it can do some auto repair so there's there are some auto repair support type options that you can do um, I usually do not use it for those um, except maybe the auto repair um, there are sometimes you'll get a model into your slicer and it'll say it's not manifold and what that means is that it has holes in the surface somewhere and it doesn't know what to do because there's a hole there and it's it's a hole in the surface it's not like a hole drilled through it um, and so it's a gap and uh, so you can use mesh mixer to repair those holes um, there are online uh, NetFab is one place. There are, there are online tools also where you can upload that STL file and it'll repair it. Most of the popular slicers today will auto repair those things on their own. Um, but you still occasionally run into that. That's not why I normally use Mesh Mixer anymore. What I use it for now is either I've got a model that's too big to print or maybe I just don't want to print it as one piece because I want to orient each part separately to get the best print quality from it. Um, and I want to slice it up in mesh mixer um, in a way that I can put it back together easily when it's actual parts that have been printed. So that's one reason I use mesh mixer. The other one is um, just the name mesh mixing. I want to put multiple things together. Um, so let's, let's go to Thingiverse, find us some stuff to mix together. I'll probably have to sign in if I want to. No, I think you can download without uh, without signing in. You just can't like things and stuff like that. Oh, there's a cool battleship game. All right, back to back to work. Um, let's. I usually do uh, Hero Quest. That's an old game from um, the early '90s, and I know that they have a lot of models for little characters that can be good. A lot of times I use this mummy. I'm just looking to see if there's a different one I want to use this time. Um, you know, let's let's just use, let's use a little goblin. All right, so we, we'll download him. So you just get the STL files. So we'll download this guy with the one with the sword. All right. And let's say we don't like this little rectangular looking base that he's on. So let's look up um, round 25 millimeter base. And let's see if there's something. Here's an assortment of blank ones. Here's some that have some actual like little cobblestone on them. Let's get one of those. Sometimes Thingiverse is also slow. So we may, may have to wait a bit to get it to open. There's 212 of these in here. Um, let's just pick one. Um, this one is probably fine. And we can scale them on our own. I don't want to dig through these, so let's just get this first one. Um, let's find something to put on the base. Um, so this is a little goblin. He's standing on this base. Um, let's find a... Oh, what happens if we find treasure? If there's anything that looks like some treasure that could be on there. There's a treasure chest. But I don't think the base is big enough for that. Um, oh, this reminds me right here. Um, these uh, MakerBot models, they're actually really nice models. They used to, you had you, once upon a time, you had to pay for them. Um, they're all free now on Thingiverse, and they are really nice models if you're interested in printing something multi-part. Um, and the best one, in my opinion, anyway, is the, if you go to the MakerBot, um, account, they, they're all in there. Now there's 528 apparently in here, but, um, the one I like the most is actually the dinosaur skeleton, the T-Rex. This is an aside. This isn't what we're doing. I just want to 
show you that it's a fun print if I can find it. This one. Um, now that one's not from MakerBot. It says that they have fixed it somehow. The one that I got just from MakerBot actually was fine. Um, there's also a Triceratops, but it's actually a really good model. Um, really, really fun model to print. Um, so that one, and it's free. Uh, let's go back to what we were doing. So we got a base. Oh, we were trying to find some treasure. Um, I wonder if I do a pile of coins. I wonder if we can find that. It'd be nice if Thingiverse were acting a little faster today. I want one that's already piled up. You could go in and take these individual ones and, you know, individually pile them together. I don't want to spend that much time on this thing. I don't see one. Let's go with the always popular skull. Except I can't write right now. It's, uh, there we go. Well, now I've got the T-Rex skull. There's one. We'll just, uh, the human skull. That one has a separate jaw, though. I want one that's kind of a, it's going to be tiny, so I don't need anything fancy. That one's low poly. Low poly, if you don't know, that just means that it doesn't have many polygons. Um, once upon a time, that mattered as far as um, the, the computers that you were using could not handle a lot of polygons. Uh, to display on the screen. It just couldn't handle that many, and so it mattered that things were low poly or not. Um, now it doesn't matter nearly as much, although now it's kind of its own aesthetic. You know, people like the low poly. I'm going to get this one because it's tiny, and it shouldn't... Uh, it's going to be tiny when we put it on that base anyway. All right, so we've got three things. We've got a goblin, a base, and a little skull. Let's go and import, but let's replace... Um, these probably all went in my downloads, I guess. Uh, let's start with the goblin. So he's in there. Now look, he's all crooked. Let's see if we can get him to align. Um, we may have to... Yeah, he's not going to... Well, let's see. He's not going to align very well. Oh, wait. There was an align. I haven't tried that. There was an align... Uh, Surface scribble. Eh. Didn't really. Didn't really align him. All right. We'll have to do some manual aligning. So, um, in order to do that, let's do transform on him. And let's see if we can get him more or less. He's got a weird pivot point. More or less flat. We're going to chop off his base anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, but or we're going to cover it up anyway. All right, so there he is. Except that it looks like he might have gotten stretched out. I don't know if I did that or not. Um, now let's let's chop the the base off and leave his feet. We're going to put that other base on there. We could overlap them, but um, I don't want any extra of this poking out accidentally. So I'm just going to do edit plane cut here, and it brings a plane onto the uh, work surface, and you can translate it around with the gizmo just like we could any other model and I'm going to drop it down and try to orient it where there's just the tops of his feet left looks like we're a little bit crooked we'll do some small adjustment there or it's very difficult to do with the mouse Let's just say that that's good. And you can flip it around to where you keep the top half or the bottom half, or you can keep both and just slice them in two. Well, that's useful for other things. We're, we're only going to keep half. We want to discard this bottom half. All right, so now we left a little bit of his base, which is fine. Um, there are a couple of ways we can get rid of that if we need to. Um, we can go into this sculpting tool, and there is a... Uh, there's a smooth brush that we could use. There's a flatten. Um, there's a draw that we could use in reverse to subtract. Um, maybe we'll do that if I, uh, which is a hold down shift. Well, it's being very small though. Oh, shift is smooth. 
make it a little larger and so you, we can just kind of smooth it out which will dissolve it more or less so I'm just clicking around here with this hold down shift and smoothing it out to kind of get rid of these parts over here by smoothing them away again this is a thing that you could spend a whole bunch of time doing or like we're doing and just do it kind of quick and good enough a lot of this is going to be covered up when we um, put the base that we imported but I don't want these um, little bits here to cover up the uh, texture that's on that base that we got. We got that cobblestone one. All right, it'll leave some little floaty things out there. That's fine. All right, let's import our base. So we're going to append that one. We don't want to replace this. We're going to append, and it was called the this one. Let's import that. Translate it around and put it in place. So edit, transform to get it kind of where we want it. We want his feet to sort of stick through there. Again, all this is really tiny, right, if we're, we're printing it. So I probably didn't need quite so much texture on this. It's pretty deep compared to, you know, what he looks like. But it's going to be, in real life, it's like that big, maybe smaller. So I think it's fine. Now, I do have some issues where, see how he's kind of floating on here. So it would probably be good to do a little bit of that sculpting and um, we can draw and kind of just draw underneath his feet so that uh, he's not floating on there that on these gaps here so it's kind of just fill them in a little bit and again we're not we're not too worried about how this thing turns out cover that up too all right that looks that looks pretty good right all right, so let's do our union on these two. We want these to be one part. So we can go into our object browser. Again, if the object browser is not visible, view object browser um, right here. So control click to select more than one thing. Boolean union. Hopefully these don't take too long to unionize together. Um, it actually doesn't look too bad like this, right? It looks okay. Let's do our iterations higher and make sure it's going to look it still looks okay um, we can reduce our edge scale a little bit I don't think this model was particularly sharp to begin with it's pretty rounded um, so I don't know that we're going to change anything by by dropping these down lower and we have the precise solution mode on also and all of these, actually, the previews look all the same. I still have auto reduce result click, though. Let's make sure that doesn't look any different. That looks all the same. All right, we're going to take that as good. All right. Um, now I've got him glued together. There's only one object in my browser now. Um, let's put our skull on there. So import append low poly skull. Wow, that's gigantic. So definitely need to um, edit transform and instead of using the arrows we're going to use the little box I want to transform it uniformly so I'm going to use the box in the middle and make it you know kind of small and we'll where did it oh, it's behind him let's put it somewhere up front here maybe even smaller than that I mean he's pretty small though so Let's tilt it a little, make it interesting. Maybe lay it on its side some. There we go. That looks great. Perfect. Accept that, and now we will um, control click both of them and union those. Now I'm noticing there is a little gap underneath here so let's cancel that and let's do the um, the build up in the sculpting 
Oh, yeah, I only need one base. Uh, let's we want to sculpt the uh, the base part, which is also the goblin now. Um, sculpt. I had the base and the skull selected, and it you can only sculpt on one thing at a time. So let's just fill underneath there a little bit. Because just for printing purposes, really, I don't want to, you know, a trap some sort of, I don't know what, oh, that must have been the bottom of the skull. We'll just kind of cover that up. All right, now he looks all right. Now, control click both of these, union. I'm just going to take the default and hope for the best. Let's see what happens. It looks okay. Um, maybe we could have used a little bit sharper skull, but... We can still, we can sculpt on this. Now it's low poly, so sculpting on low poly. Oh no, it's not on the screen. No. I just now saw that. Oh man. So I don't know when the last time, y'all didn't see any of that. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Glad you said that. Um, I don't know how long that chat has been there. I just now saw it though. All right, but we can do this really quick. You, you heard me we'll talk through it. Maybe that's a good teaching, you know, listen through everything, and now let's look at it. All right, here's what you do. We're going to replace. Get our goblin. Open him. You can see, yeah, I, I get so busy looking at my screen that I don't look at your screen. Um, so he comes in. He's a little crooked. We're going to go in, edit, transform, use the little gizmo to kind of flatten him out. Um, that looks more or less good. Drop him down to the plane-ish level. That's fine. Um, we will cut off his base, his square base that we don't want. So I'm going to do edit plane cut for that. Drop that plane down to where it's just kind of got his feet showing. And we're going to discard half, which is the bottom half in this case. Um, this little blue arrow lets you select the other half if somehow you wanted to keep the base and not the model. Except we actually did a much better job this time of cutting his feet off than we did last time. But there's this one little piece hanging out right here. Um, let's go to Sculpt. And uh, we will do any brush. And then we'll do the hold down Shift to smooth. And we'll just kind of smooth that away. All right. Then we will import... Append, not replace. We want to keep the model we have and add to it. So we want to append uh, the little cobblestone base. It comes in. It's already it's scaled to the correct size that we need. So we'll, we could rescale it if we wanted to. But edit, transform, and we're going to slide it underneath him. And kind of get his feet sticking there. Now let's move it where he's closer to the back. Make sure he's attached to it. That looks fine. Um, except that, um, I probably, yeah, so I still have these little, like right here, where his foot is kind of in midair. That would be, it would print fine because it's so tiny, you would never really notice. But let's fix that with sculpting. And we'll just use a, an adding brush here, so a draw brush. And we'll just kind of draw underneath here. To uh, fill in that gap underneath his foot so that he's not got his foot floating in air. So, something like that. And it'll kind of weld him to the thing when we're done. These are definitely overlapping now. All right. Um, control click the object browser over here and control click the two goblin combined with base and Boolean union. So I did go through the when I was talking when I was doing it, um, and you were just hearing me talk. I went through and I did you know do search depth at zero, um, iterations up, edge scale smaller. But on this particular model, it doesn't have really sharp edges anyway, um, and it it didn't really make any difference. So I just took the default options and they looked fine. Um, but if you do the default options and they're all garbled up, then Control Z. Um, and you're going to have to, usually it's the, um, oh, what is it called? Well, I can't do it now. I'll do it on the skull. Um, import, append, skull, comes in gigantic. So we definitely have to make it smaller. So edit, transform. The, the little square in the center, transform uniform, 
the squares on the ends, the colored squares, transform in just that direction. So we'll make it tiny and then move him down, kind of zoom in a little bit, make it a little smaller even maybe. And let's rotate it around and flip it on its side a little bit, send it a little bit further back and a little further down. Looks great. Um, let's unionize that. So control click both of them. So they're both selected. Boolean union. Um, usually this target edge scale, lowering that is what will make a, a sharper edge. Um, clicking off of the auto reduce will also help. Um, but usually it's this term and it can go down into like 0.2 range is where I normally have it, but it seems fine on, on this kind of model. So I'm not going to change it. Okay. Now we are almost exactly where we left off, except I did go in and you know, there's some, there's some bridging there that I went in and sculpted away. So sculpt brush with the draw brush and just kind of fill in underneath there. So it's not floating. And this model has a kind of weird hole in the bottom of it. I think that's from the model itself though. See right there. I don't know what's going on with that. It's just some redraw issues. There we go. Got a, got a neck on the skull. Um, and this is where we left off at. And I finally saw the chat that, Hey, you can't see anything. So what I was saying is, let me, it's, let me, uh, switch over to another tool for a second so that it's not doing that re redraw issue. So maybe our, our skull is not in enough detail, or maybe, you know, it's got this little mold line on it from, this was a plastic model that somebody scanned in with a, a little scanner. Um, we're going to show how to do some of that later. It's tough to do um, little tiny things with with the equipment that you probably have you actually need really expensive scanners to do that but um, with just your phone you can or a camera of any kind you can do some um, photogrammetry uh, that will get you three-dimensional STL type data of something that's in the real world we'll do that later um, I, I think these were probably done on a dental scanner actually um, so it's decently high resolution um, so at this point, I've got one model. It's all one thing. Um, and I can go in and I could sculpt. So I've got this, well, not select. I've got sculpt. Um, and there are brushes where um, I can add things, pinch things around, flatten things, inflate, add spikes to stuff. Um, all sorts of different uh, tools that I have. So let's just use draw and got to remember which button it is that lets me oh that's the flatten oh which one is lets me shift over to subtracting i don't remember well it's too big right now i need to make it smaller laziness um it uh averages out your brush strokes on there. And there, there is a, well, it's being really strange right now with our redraw. Uh, so this is some of the stuff that can happen with Mesh Mixer when it gets into some issues. Um, you know, I've got this weird thing coming out the back um, where it, 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 it I think maybe it has misinterpreted this skull as some sort of hollow thing and it's having trouble redrawing it. So you can go to this analysis and do the inspector and um, it will go in and uh, let's do a flat feel. It will fix all of the um, errors that it finds in the model where there's a hole or, or something like that. So, and you can, it's actually at 0 0.01 millimeter repair size right now. So that's pretty small. Um, so you can go in and repair things. Um, I don't know if that will help us with our sculpting or not. It's possible, but let's try it. Uh, yeah, it's still going to have issues. So 
I think our model is getting not corrupted. It'll still work, um, but the it's having some issues on my computer here. Um, maybe let's work on this. Maybe you don't like the position his hand is in, but you don't want to redraw it. In your sculpting, uh, or well, in your selecting, you can go in and um, there are different brush modes. I usually use the spherical disc brush, um, but uh, you, sphere brush is fine. And you can, oh, it's on the, it's on the uh, clear that. <laughs> so select, and you can just draw on the screen and it will select, you know, whatever you circle. Now it, it does select everything behind it. So if I tried to select this arm from the same view, I get all of this stuff behind it. So you do have to arrange the model in a way that kind of isolates the part you want with nothing in the background or foreground. And you could do something like this. So now I've got just his hand selected and you can edit and there is, um, you can cut it away, you can do different things, but there's also deform and there's modify. Um, modify is usually talking about the selection, so maybe you wanna um, expand the, the selection or contract the selection a little bit, you can do that. Deform is talking about changing the shape of what you selected. And if you do this soft transform, then it will give you your little gizmo and it'll let you kind of move, you know, maybe you wanna reposition this you can move it around and put it in a new position. You know, it, it has a little bit of issue with, you know, where this selection is joined to the rest of the model. And it also expanded it a little bit, but, um, but it's a way that you can create something new, new position anyway, based on what you had before tedious, but um, doable. And so you can go in there and, and pose him a little bit different. Um, you can accept. And now he's got a different shape arm. Um, you know, maybe you want his, his sword further over his head. So you go to select, um, pick, isolate the sword or wherever you want the joint to be. So I want it, you got his elbow. Actually, let's do his shoulder. Oh, if you do, you can do a, you know, a, this kind of just clicking selection. There we go. Um, or you can hold down and do a circle lasso type selection. Mod, uh, deform, soft transform. There are options on the soft transform. Um, I usually leave them alone, but you, there are others you could try. Um, what if we do soft tangent? I wonder if that'll help us out a little bit. And I wanna raise this thing in this position. Now, obviously I've got a you know, get his shoulder back in position. But look at that. It looks pretty, pretty good, I think. And so now you've got an entirely different one. Maybe you want to have one model that you've, you've created or you found on Thingiverse or whatever, you've scanned it in, um, and you want to have a bunch of versions of it. That's a way, pretty simple way, to go in and repose the model. Now, obviously, this is more for organic type modeling. You're probably not going to use Mesh Mixer much for um, modeling a part for a machine. Um, I can't say that you would never do that, but it's probably not going to be a thing you do often. Um, so it's it's a way that you can go in and take stuff and you know tweak it, make it a little bit different, um, without having to start all the way over and <laughs> remodel the whole thing again. Um, so, oh yeah, yeah, it is pretty cool. That's that's the, I think a lot of people, you know, they don't know all the options that are out there. I don't know all the options that are out there. Um, and this is a easy, easy way, assume you're not some um, really good, you know, modeler to begin with, you know, very good modeler to begin with, then it's a way that you can get that same type of effect without having to be able to model from scratch this kind of stuff. Um, all right, we can clear our selection. Um, at this point, you've got your model over here. You can right click. Oh, does it not let me right click? Um, you can file export and you can export your model as a, um, this 3MF format 
I have not used it much, but it is like an STL file. It, it is supposedly better. Um, I have not used it that much. I think it's better in the sense that it does allow some bit of um, copy protection. I don't know that it, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about it. Um, I usually just use the STL, binary STLs. So let's call this goblin. All right, and so I should open up Cura. I should have a STL file of this guy that's ready to print, um, or at least ready to slice and you know maybe support and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> that I could print. Um, let's see. We have. I think we have enough time to do the other reason that I use Mesh Mixer. Um, while Cura is loading, it's taking forever. Um, the other reason I use Mesh Mixer is, let's say that this is a really big goblin, you know, and you're printing it life size or something, and you can't, your printer is not big enough to print all of this at one time. Oh, here we go. Cura is open. Um, and you have to slice it into little pieces to be able to print the pieces on your printer and then glue them together later. So um, maybe you want... Uh, to cut his arm off of here, print it separately, and then glue it on later. We are looking, yes, I'm, we're looking at mesh mixer. Um, so what you can do, select your model, it's already selected, and um, go in and let's edit. Well, let's, let's do it this way. Let's select, let's do a little, uh, I want to cut it off right at his shoulder here. Right in there. Oh, well, I did a weird selection. Let's try that again. There we go. So I've, I've selected all around there. Um, I've selected that to kind of isolate where I want to do this cut. So um, edit, plain cut. There are two plain cuts. So there's plain cut in this edit menu over here. But if I click on this edit menu, it's going to lose my selection. So I'm doing this select, the thing I want to cut edit, plane cut, and arrange our plane. If I, if I don't highlight just the part to be cut, this plane will cut through everything it crosses through. And so um, that's not always what I want. Like I don't want the sword itself to be cut. I just want his arm to be cut. So I kind of go in here and let's, let's arrange it at a reasonable looking spot. Something like that. Think oh oh no. I think that's probably probably I don't really remember where I highlighted it, um, but I can see that I've got a nice cut uh, kind of profile right here. It's, it's all solid. That looks good to me. Um, I don't want to discard both of these though. I want to keep both pieces. So slice and keep both. Last time when we cut off his base, we discarded half. All right, so it looks like absolutely nothing happened, but if you look really close, you can kind of see there's the little outline of where it got cut, right? So you can kind of see that. So now, edit, separate shells. This is the step I always forget to do, um, but separate shells will take and pull it back apart. And so now I've got two shells, the part that I want to print separate from the main body. Okay. Um, Sometimes you'll do this, and if, if the uh, model was created as a group of shells to begin with and then uploaded, you'll separate shells, and, and it'll all be a bunch of pieces. Like his belt will be a different piece, and his head will be a different piece. If that's true, then you need to merge the model before you do this part. Um, this one is just the models that... Well, we did those Boolean joins anyway, so it kind of joined everything together at that point. Um, all right. So now I can hide... You know, I can... Look at just this. So right, right here, this would work. I've got two separate models that I can, I can export with this one showing, and I get just the arm with the sword. I can hide that one. I'm, I'm clicking on this little eyeball indicator in the object browser. I can hide it and select the other one. 
you know, and then do export and I'll get just this part. And so I, that would be enough. Um, when I had the two pieces, I would have to glue them together, you know, on this surface. So it might be good to have some sort of locator pin that actually kind of located the arm back onto his shoulder. Um, now this is a really small model, so this is not probably the best way to do this, but um, on a larger model, normally a small, this one at regular size, you would just print the whole thing, right? Um, but if this is a really big one, then this is a big surface. So what you do to create a, a locator pin is, let's, let's go back to both of them are here. Let's select the body and hide the arm so you can work on this surface. Mesh mix, now you, you could model your pins in Tinkercad or whatever and bring them in as their own models, but a pin is usually just gonna be either a cylinder or a rectangle of some sort. Um, so if you want it to be able to rotate, you do a cylinder. If you want it to kind of be locked in place, uh, you do a rectangle. Uh, let's do the rectangle. So I'm gonna drop it kind of where it belongs. Now it came in way larger than it needed to be, obviously. Um, now this one has a different gizmo on it, right? So uh, this uh, little tent looking thing is the scale, uniform scale. So we'll just kind of get it, that looks reasonable. It is embedded in the plane about halfway. That looks perfect. Um, we'll accept that. And let's, it's called dropped part one because I dropped it on the model. Let's go to select it and edit and um, transform. And let's just see, it's one millimeter. So that's really small again. That's gonna be really too tiny to actually print. So we're having to pretend this is much larger than it really is. Um, let's, let's make it exactly one millimeter though. All right. So I just manually edited it size in the thing. All right, now I can Boolean join this little stub onto the um, goblin body. Um, before I do that though, let's copy it. So over here in my object browser, I select it and there's a copy icon down here. If you hover, I think it yet yeah, was well, duplicate technically. So I'm gonna duplicate it. Well, I duplicated it twice. Let's erase it once. Um, so now there's one on top of, they're, they're on top of each other. There's both of them in the same spot. So I'm gonna take one of them and mer Boolean join it to our um, body, this one so that it's actually part of the body now. So combine uh, Boolean join or union. Um, I will, you know, this has got some straight-ish edges, so I am gonna drop this down to 0.25 just to try and get those edges more rigid. We'll do that as our only modification. So now um, I've got that, and if I hide everything, I've got my one copy of that still sitting there. I'm gonna take this copy, transform it, so edit, transform. I'm gonna make it slightly larger because I'm gonna use it to cut the hole, the receiving socket in the arm. Um, so I want it to be a little bit larger. So this goes back to your tolerance test that you printed with you know, the circles that, uh, that spin. Um, it will tell you what kind of tolerance your printer is kind of able to do. Um, if you don't know or you're not really that worried about it, use 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters, something in that range. Now this is super tiny already. So if I do um, 0.3, it's probably gonna make it way bigger um, than it needs to be. So I'm gonna actually just do 1.1 because of the scale we're at. But you probably want a little bit of a gap in the uh, size between the hole, the receiver, and the peg that you're using. All right, so I've, I've enlarged it. I didn't move it at all. It's in the exact same spot it was in before. Let's bring up our sword, which is uh, this guy. And we don't want to Boolean add these. We want to subtract these. And it matters the order you select them. So I actually want to select the arm first and then select what I want to subtract from the arm. So control the uh, copy. You can rename these also if they're confusing on what's what. And then Boolean difference, and it'll give me a little preview. Uh, maybe we need to you know, bump this down to 0.02 just to get those sharper edges. But we did increase its size a little bit, except 
and now I've got two parts in my object browser. One of them is the sword arm with the socket in it, like so. And the other is called drop part because it renamed it the, the uh, dropped part when I joined them together. They fit together perfectly. Um, you could cut holes in both of these and, and use uh, something else as the pin. One, one thing that sometimes you might want to do is cut two cylinders and then instead of pins, put magnets in there. That way it can come apart. Um, so this, this isn't just for like making little goblins. You can use it for all sorts of joining big things together. Um, and you can get them aligned perfectly. Here I've just printed the, um, the alignment peg as part of the model itself. Now you will probably have a little bit of drooping here if you go to print this with no support. Um, so you could either cut this at a little bit of an angle so that the peg is at a 45 degree angle so there's no drooping under it. Um, you know, you could do things like that to make it a better um, model for printing. This is this model's got some other support issues. Obviously, he's going to need some support under here also, um, some support under his elbow. So he's going to need support under his chin, under his nose anyway. So it's one of those that uh, you probably aren't going to get away with not supporting. Um, let's see. I, those are the two main things that I do with um, Mesh Mixer. Kind of three, I guess, if you include the rearranging sculpting type thing. Um, but really, sticking things together that already exist, mixing them together, um, and then using mesh mixer as a way to slice up really big things into printable sizes and include the alignment pegs so that you can easily reassemble it with some sense that you've got it back in this right position. Um, those are the two big things that I use mesh mixer for. Um, at this point you would you would highlight this guy, file, export, and then highlight the other one file, export, and you'd have two separate STOs that you could print. This one would be kind of hard to print. I guess you'd have to print it kind of, er, it's kind of hard to rotate around. Kind of, well, even more than that. I can't get it rotated the way I would print it. I'd print it basically with his elbow on the ground, the elbow and that uh, pommel on the ground. All right. Um, next time, hopefully that helped out. Hopefully it wasn't too bad with the... Um, just looking at the other screen for a while while I talked through it. Hopefully we made up for that. Um, oh, I did open Cura. Um, we don't, all you would do is bring them in and print them at that point. Um, next time, I have join in printed parts listed, except that I did get in, I did get in this guy. He's over here on the floor. Where's that? Right there. I got that in. There's the dog. Um, I got that in. So this is the um, printer that I showed you from Amazon uh, that I ordered. It came in a little bit early. And so this one, it is one of the resin printers. And I do plan on talking about resin printers anyway. So I think we will go ahead and unbox that thing and get a print off of it. So you can kind of see um, how the resin printers work and if it's something you want to do. Um, this one is one of the bigger ones though. There are much, you know, much smaller ones. Um, so this one in the end is $200, you know, say $40 if you click the coupon and it starts at 250. So it's going to be 210 plus tax, I guess. Um, so that's, that's a really pretty good price for the resin printer MSLA style. So the masked, uh, stereo it's not really, it's lithography, it's still right, it's UV light. Um, so it's a MSLA is uh, what they've kind of termed these printers that use a UV light to cure resin through a LCD mask. Um, and so we'll, I think next time, instead of doing the um, joining, we'll, we'll open this guy up and see if we can get some prints off of it, get it set up. There's really no assembly to these. Um, they come assembled, there's more disassembly. You take the packing out of it than anything on getting these up and running. Um, they are messy though, so you'll you'll kind of get to see if it's something that you're interested in. So that'll be next time. Um, 
in the meantime, uh, I moved quiz one. I want to go through quiz one and add or make sure that it, I didn't have anything in there that was we haven't talked about yet since I did some order topics out of order. So quiz one is not going to open until Wednesday, and then it'll stay open until next Wednesday. So you have a week to do it, um, and it I'll open it on Wednesday once I'm sure that I don't have any questions in there that aren't things we haven't even talked about. Um, there could be some G-code questions in that one that we haven't really talked about yet. Um, all right. So on Wednesday, look out for quiz one opening. You've got a week to do it. I've seen some of the um, I've seen some of the submissions for the contest. A lot of those I've got some benches to grade. Um, so it's, things are starting to roll in on the assignments, which is good. Um, I did add a an option. So if you didn't see it on Discord. For assignment number five, or option number five, the one that's the technical brief, um, I am going to let that one be team uh, assignments if you want to. The teams have to be three, two, or one people, person. Um, three or two people, I guess one's just solo. Um, and so you could do that one, the, the one that's a bigger project type thing. You could do that one in a group of three or less if you want to. Um, so if you didn't notice that, pop up in discord then that is a uh, that's a relatively new thing all right i will see y'all on wednesday